Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast this morning. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. My name is Ramit Paulson. Thank you for joining us this morning. Mm. Before I, I, I make a mistake again, what is today's date? <laughs> today's the <laughs> 12th. Yeah, finally, that 12th I was talking about mm -hmm. is today. We so, finally made it here. <laughs> <laughs> so we have almost like uh, 13 days More to days Christmas. More days to Christmas, right. And it's here, ladies and gentlemen. So mm -hmm. if you are doing the buying or anything else, um, make sure that you do it maybe this week because anything beyond this week we do not know what is going to be mm -hmm. uh, so but Christmas must happen whether we have something new or not Christmas mm -hmm. must happen it always comes yes. and even if the national grid collapses Christmas yeah. will still happen yeah so I was doing some calculation and it was like uh, for the last 10 years every month we have 1.15 uh, times that the grid will collapse, mm. you know, because it has collapsed like 100, collapsed like uh, 138 times yeah, in 10 years, in 10 which years. is which is terrible. Yeah. Well, on the show this morning, we are going to be looking at very interesting uh, topics. First of all, is that uh, ECOWAS team is now negotiating with Niger on return to civil rule. Mm. Another topic we'll be looking at is, is Berli listed at Karadolu fit to stay governor of Ondo State? So that's a question we're asking this morning. And of course, we'll be looking at the papers on Off the Press to see what the headlines this morning are. Once again, good morning and welcome to The Breakfast. We do hope that you're going to have a swell time uh, watching us this morning. Yes. Okay, um, we'll go straight to the top trending issues. Uh, top trending issues, the first one here is that federal government to get 20 million out of school children to school. Uh, that's according to the Minister of Education. The Minister of Education says it is working to get Nigeria's 20 million out of school children back to school in the next four years. The Minister of Education, Professor Tahir Maman, said this on Monday at the 2024 Budget Defense before the Joint Committee of the National Assembly on Education in Abuja. He noted that the millions of out-of-school children in Nigeria is a major problem for the country. The minister said that the ministry had engaged with stakeholders to review Nigeria's school curriculum to ensure skills acquisition for students. He encouraged universities to include skills training and entrepreneurship into their curricula to ensure that they produce self-reliant graduates. Maman noted that a total of 101.45 billion naira was allocated for the ministry in 2024, out of which 5.88 billion was for personnel cost, 1.08 billion for overhead cost, and 94.48 billion naira for capital expenditure. The Chairman of the House Committee on Alternative Education, Reb Aliyu Mustafa, said that the House was concerned about the rising number of out-of-school children in Nigeria. Uh, there are so many things that were said there, but um, I'm glad that they're saying they're taking adequate steps to make sure the 20 million out-of-school children are back to school. Yeah. Even though I have so many questions, let me hear you <laughs> <laughs> what you think about um, it. So I think, first, where we live, right, you're moving around, going in traffic, and you're seeing a lot of school children, mm -hmm. like children that are supposed to be in school, and they're out there on the streets um, begging for alms and stuff. And sometimes they don't even have any other thing they're doing. They're not learning anything. Mm -hmm. um, in my church, we do like this um, CSR things that we do like every Christmas whereby we go into communities and we try to um, help the people there and on Sunday a lot of people were in a somber mood because we watched this video of a community and there was just this lady who has a school certificate and she teaches about 30 something children guess how much they pay per term they pay 5,000 naira for a term now if you have to go to school maybe like in the evening if you cannot afford the one in the morning you pay a hundred naira for every time that you have to go and guess what there are families who cannot even afford that a hundred naira to take their kids to school that evening mm -hmm. so now there are lots of children they are not doing anything they just wake up 
eat if that's even if they have food to eat they roam around and that's it so there is nothing being impacted into their lives they don't know anything mm -hmm. they just know how to move around except and, how to be street wise yes exactly mm -hmm. and then maybe the other thing they have to do now is to go to the to try like maybe the streets be begging in traffic and all of that meanwhile these kids are supposed to be in school they're supposed to be learning and these are the leaders of tomorrow as we like to say mm -hmm. so what's happening to all of these children and if the government is really really going to um, invest in this and making sure that all the kids that are out of school the 20 million of them are going to be back in school that is great because our presidents our governors our innovators are going to come out from these kids so it's better for us to start investing in their future right now so i think it's commendable but the question now is is that going to happen and yeah, how yeah. many of those kids because i remember um in the former administration, the first term for Buhari, they said they were going to feed, you know, these kids in school. They will come to school and they will have lunch and all of that. But we never really see that materialize. Yes. So happen. a lot of times they make these promises, they raise our hopes high, and then they get dashed again. And I hope that would not be the case for this one. Yeah, well, um, anything short of free education we will not get what they're talking about. 20 million people, why are they out? You said something about 100 Naira. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of families who will feed on that 100 Naira for a day. Yeah. In this Lagos, not even anywhere else, the center of excellence, you find those people there. Like you said, the people who were supposed to be fed at the time they were talking about feeding them, a humongous amount was budgeted mm -hmm. for that, but we didn't see that. In fact, at some point I was moving around with the governor of Lagos State and we went to one school on one of these occasions and they were served boiled yam and <sighs> eggs, you okay. know. And you could see the jubilation uh, in the school and I had to ask one of them, ah, so is this guys are enjoying this day. Day. They have never seen this. Before. But that day the governor went that way, so they, they have to. They have to, yeah. So, so sometimes, well, I'll give it to the government as well. Sometimes they make provisions for these people. But, but the middlemen mm. are the ones that just siphon, siphon this in, money. Yeah. But it goes a long way to say a lot about, um, about monitoring. No matter what you do, if there's no mechanism to monitor whatever you're doing, then you might just fail. It's futile. Y yes. Okay, we're talking about agriculture, people returning to agriculture. We don't have... Um, uh, there were these agents that used to come to villages and everywhere mm -hmm. to teach people how, Sensitize the, them. Yeah, how to do this thing. Agricultural extension officers, we mm -hmm. don't have them anymore. They monitor how people plant their, their crops, mm -hmm. uh, what, then teach them the new methods to be used. Now that we have technology, maybe they could have been the ones to be teaching these people. Yes. They're no longer there. There are no longer people who go to schools to monitor uh, what the teachers are doing and how the students are faring and all that. Even the no, curriculum. How many no people are monitoring. Really monitoring that? Yeah, but I, I like the fact that they said they, they need to change the curriculum to yes. involve something like um, uh, skills acquisition and yes. all that. If they can do that, it will be very, very good. But if we read down that story, uh, there was another point they made that nowadays uh, schools are producing unemployable people. Mm. Now, well, yes, you could say that, but who among them, I mean the people who are advanced in the age now, had the talent or the, the skill when they were being employed for the first time? True. Most times they employ you, teach you on the job, mm -hmm. and you become learning. very good. Yes. Now, they want you to be 25 years and you, know and you have 10 years of experience. How? When you do I always, I always <laughs> wonder that. that. I'm like, how am I supposed to have all of these experiences if you've never given me a shot mm -hmm. to even learn in the first place? And I understand the fact that they're saying, okay, um, they need to change the curriculum to ensure mm -hmm. that we have like these skills and acquisitions. But then, if you don't... so. Okay, let me put it this way. I remember when I was much younger, um, I used to have this whole presenting skills and all of that. But guess what? My school never had that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why don't we do this presentation? If you go to other schools, maybe in the US, mm -hmm. you see them, they have like their science project. Mm -hmm. Aside you know, submitting it. For us, we just say, oh, do this, and you submit it, then a teacher marks it, and that's it. But then, do you bring the kids out to come and explain how did you get here? That, you're already helping them to build your mm -hmm. presentation skills. Yeah. So, okay, like now we're in the technological age, as we say, the age of technology. Right now, are you teaching them things like, you know, coding? People actually, because like, these they're kids, doing handwriting. their brains are empty, right? So all you have to do is fill it up with the right things. If you're teaching 
teaching them how for me i can't start learning how to code at the moment I'm, I feel like I'm too old for that. I'm not that old, but really? <laughs> yeah. But okay. then for these kids, they pick up things yeah. so easily and so fast. So at the end of the day, if you're changing the curriculum, make sure that you're putting things that would you know enable them to be more employable. And I think another thing I want to add is the fact that history is really not in our curriculum as we would love for it to have to have to be there. We need that, to that's real history. Yes, of Nigeria. We're not, Nigeria. Not telling me that Mongo Park came and discovered my village. No, where were my ancestors? What what happened in the the the, the, um, the civil war like you know all those kind of things mm -hmm. that we really really need to know about nigeria not the people that came discovered and moved away discovered, no the yeah. real heroes of nigeria those mm -hmm. things need to be added into the curriculum as well so i think it's a whole overhaul of everything yeah but you're talking about education and people going back to school and all that you go to abuja who we where everything you know is the melting pot it should be the melting pot because that's the capital of nigeria you find schools where children sit on the floor there mm. was there was a photograph and some videos a few weeks ago that were showing schools in abuja wow. they had no desk they had nothing in the school people they, the children were sitting on the floor and writing in abuja so if it can happen in abuja then then you can else? imagine what will happen so now, more or less, the government has just removed education from their list and put in the hands of uh, private individuals that may not do what they're supposed to do because they are driven by the business yes. of the education. And even if they do, it's so pricey it's, that a lot of people cannot much. afford it. Too much. So I don't know what they're talking about. My friend made a joke. She's like, oh, I want to put my child in crutch around this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And she's like, why am I paying a millionaire for my child to go and just play mm. in school? But at the end of the day, because you know that you can't put your child in a public school, what are they really getting? So you're saying, okay, I want to put you in a private school where I'm sure that, you know, the curriculum is better, you're, you're learning faster. But guess what? That comes at a price. The price tag is humongous. So how many people in Nigeria can actually afford this education we're talking about? Well, maybe I'm talking like a poor man, but for a millionaire, I'll go to NCE <laughs> and, empl and employ like five hundred. Homeschooling? Them. Yes, to be, co to be homeschooling that person and a nanny will be there. All of those people will be covered by that one millionaire. Why will I just send my child to go and play in school but for one million? It's the reality. It's the reality. So, but but right you now. find out that if you don't do that, you don't have a good alternative. Mm -hmm. you, you go into a primary school, a government primary school now, one class is holding like 120 Student, pupils yeah. and one teacher that has not been paid or is being paid the paltry sum. I have, I have a PhD holder friend who is in the civil service that has not received up to 100,000 before. Wow. So how would you want that person to work? Just because you have pensions for that person and you're keeping the person there, uh, there's pension for you, so government work is, is better than any other work. But how pension how that you don't even, how pension how that you're not even like sure of. Yes. Because Nigeria is borrowing from the pension fund and the pensioners themselves are not getting yes. their money. Some of them go to sleep for how many days because of verification and all that. You know, it's, it's crazy. Well, if the government really does this um, and they do it well, because whatever is what they're doing is what they're doing well. So as long as they can do this and we're sure and they do it well, that would be commendable. And I think that would be a step in the right direction. Well, 94 billion uh, naira is what has been voted for for whatever you're thinking about, because they remove the personnel costs, they remove uh, any other expenditure, what was left for um, capital expenditure, as mm -hmm. they call it, is 94 billion uh, naira. It's not dollars. Yeah. And it's still not the percentage of the budget, the annual budget, as recommended by the United Nations. So I don't know what we're talking about. But this thing is possible. The Southwest did it at the time of our war. Mm -hmm. He said it, this must happen. And that's why we have, like, more educated people in the southwest yeah. so nigeria can replicate that in the entire nation except mm -hmm. they don't want to well let's just hope that they do mm -hmm. anyways moving on to another story nigeria has been thrown into darkness as national grid collapses again nigeria's electricity grid has once again thrown the country into darkness as the government operated system went down monday afternoon the system collapsed at about 1 p.m., cutting down electricity from 4,032.80 megawatts at about 12 p.m. to 43 megawatts at 1 p.m. and a mega 303 megawatts at about 5 p.m. 
Most discos confirm that their feeders are out, even as over 22 electricity plants on the grid were all reading zero megawatts as of 5 p.m. going by the data available on the transmission company of Nigeria's system network. The national grid, one of the most embarrassing entities of the power sector, has failed many times this year alone, even as the grid has collapsed for about 138 times in the last one decade. Just recently, TCN had rolled out the drums over a misleading celebration of 400 days of no system collapse. About two months ago, the grid system in a double jeopardy collapsed at about 12.40 a.m., only to go down again at 6.40 a.m., six hours interval. Data on the grid collapse showed that in 2013, the country recorded 24 past system collapses. The collapse incident stood at 13 in 2014. In 2015, the grid collapsed at about 10 times. In 2016, it rose to 28, while 21 cases were recorded in 2017. Grid collapse cases in 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021 were 13, 11, 4, and 4, respectively. It collapsed about 10 times between 2022 and this year. A check-in as of 1 p.m. on Monday on Ebon Power was left on the grid with 43 megawatts. Only Azura was on the grid at 5 p.m. with 303 megawatts. A number of distribution companies, Discos confirmed, to us that the grid went down at about 1 p.m. yesterday so yes yeah i don't know is, is so when i got home yesterday i was like at about 6 p.m there was still no light and yeah like, there was a flash the there was a flash where, while we were at work you know yeah. it was flash and then it went back maybe three minutes or so yeah. i was told when i got home and i don't know it's really embarrassing, like they say, uh, one of the most embarrassing and we things. Supply, we supply power to some other countries, neighboring some countries. Some countries that are celebrating years of interrupted uh, power interrupted supply. Power. We are having 400 days and celebrating. I, I don't know how they want the international... Of which that's not saint. even true because... I, I don't think like I don't even think you go 400 days and you celebrate and I'm not I am sure that you know I'm, there were times that it's it's not only interrupted they're just saying that the grid did not collapse mm. in that 400 yeah, days you're, you're so right. it's not uninterrupted power supply because in the last 400 days or in the last one year there are so many times that I've had to you know move over to an alternative power source which is you know your diesel generators and that right now is so expensive and then i just ask myself are, are we serious are we playing in this country as we like to say because we have so much sunlight why are we not exploring that now we're talking about global warming who knows whether our river niger will dry up uh, mm -hmm. god forbid anyway but what if it it happens even if it doesn't happen why do we have to rely solely on hydro powered electricity mm -hmm. and not consider the solar energy that we have in abundance you know you can't even step out of the and uh, we're going house. to cop 28 so if we're going there that means we should be looking at all of these alternatives that we can um bring to the nation i don't know whether our leaders are well uh, there are so many words coming that i should not Everyone say is thinking about oil yeah. so i think our leaders are more fixated on oil so they never really you know move out of the box to other things that we might need but you, they know these things and they're not doing them. You go over to the America, they go to the UK, they go to every other country that they go to, they're exploring solar energy. I think it's a scale of preference type of thing. Um, so in the scale of preference, that's probably not on the top. Like what, that's not, that doesn't make the list. What should be? Because what our works? economy is, is, is the Dwindling. way it is because of the power that we have. If yes. we had better power, steady power, mm -hmm. and cheap power, we would have progressed more than this exactly definitely because a lot of a lot of um companies you know rely on this even the lady downstairs the person who's selling in a kiosk she also relies on power to be able to chill her drinks because we live in a very hot environment the weather is so hot and humid so the lady needs you know power to be able to chill her drinks for you to be able to buy them and be satisfied the barber needs electricity you know to the cut hairdresser his, yeah. needs electricity everyone Everybody, everyone needs electricity so imagine if they're spending so much on petrol or diesel that obviously increases the cost of you know whatever service they're going to give render to you so therefore they're not even going to make as much money for the nation Let for me revenue ask you a personal question 
How much do you spend on diesel per month? So last month I spent 170,000 and I live in a very small, mat well, I, I wouldn't say matchbox, but a very, you know, small and cute apartment. Yes, 170,000 on, on diesel in a diesel. country that has national power, whatever it is. And we supply to some neighboring countries too. Okay, 170. It's sad. There are people who will be looking at you like, oh, that's like five months' salary for me. <laughs> because truly, there are people who are earning 15,000, yeah. 20,000, and maybe if you are earning Honestly, 50, honestly this previous lot. month, I even told my neighbors, I'm like, I'm, I'm not sure I want to do this. Because it started from, from 80,000, then it went to 100, 120, 150 last month, and this month was 170. And I'm like, where are we going to? At some point, we'll get to, the, we'll get to a place where we have to start paying 200, 250. How much am I making? That I'm spending so much money on just power alone and that's even an alternative power we're not talking about what i'm paying to you know um the power, holding, the, the power company. holding company as well and then i have to pay my rent i have to feed i have to fuel my car the, there's a lot nigerians were well done nigerians we you, are going through a lot you Lord move, will help you us. Move, you <laughs> move to Maui. Or you <laughs> at this point, <laughs> or you move to, I might but, move to my father's house in Ikorodu at this but, point. But you see, that's the reason a lot of people go through the kind of stress they go through. You know, people come from Ogun State a, all a the way, very, all the way to come and work in Lagos State and pay tax in Lagos State. And Lagos State is just comfortable after all, they're still coming here, they mm -hmm. need Lagos to survive. But what are you doing to make sure that these people are comfortable enough now? We have gone to COP28, we have gone to other places and told the world that we are going to produce or we are going to supply 100, 100 buses. electric bus, box, buses. We yeah. are going to, and that is 100 buses. Even Lagos BRT is more than 100. And well, it's no, still maybe, not maybe, maybe, maybe they want to start with this since it's just electric buses. So if you're looking at electricity powering these buses, you're like, okay, let's start small and then let's see how we go. So I always have to make a case. <laughs> <laughs> Let me not even say what I intended to say, but this final one is just a very fast one. Last month sacks five officials for corruption and other offenses. The Lagos State Traffic Management Authority has terminated the appointment of five of its officials for corruption and other offenses. In a statement on Monday by last month spokesman Adebayo Toafik, the Traffic Management Authority said letters of termination of appointments were released to the officers on December 8, 2023. Good thing, last month. Every other um, agency should sit up and make sure that the bad eggs within them should be removed. And I'm still talking about this bombing that happened. Let us see people answering for mm -hmm. their, their mistakes. Yes. Mm. And so many other things. Mm -hmm. Palano yeah. even warned that they should compensate all the families. Yes. In the last decade, there have been so many mistaken Errors bombings. like this, yes. It's so yeah. wrong. It's but so wrong. aside compensation, I think you must pay, you must... There are consequences for certain actions, right? Mm -hmm. So you can't just just go scot free and say, "Oh, it happened. Oh, sorry, a pat on the back. Oh, well done, and that's it." Have no, them removed. But the thing is, the last time, the last administration of President Mohammed Buhari, the service chiefs were said to be very corrupt, and so many reports, damning reports, came out. And guess what? They were removed and then given ambassadorial positions in other countries. So what that tells you is, it, it's almost like you're rewarding corruption or you're rewarding bad behavior. Because if an error like this could happen, right, maybe for the, the, the Kaduna bombing we're talking about, but an error could happen and nothing is being done, that means you're telling the other people, the subordinates, that it's okay. Mm -hmm. You can do it as well and nothing will happen. And where so does it end? So long as you know the right people. Yeah, so it's a cycle. It, it's a vicious cycle. It just keeps happening. People are corrupt and you're not saying anything about it. You're like, oh, it's fine. We'll sweep it under the carpet. You are rewarding bad behavior and you're letting them know that it is okay to do it and nothing happens to you. So, and I think I think, you know, if they remove these people, like for the last month officials now, it's a great thing because that serves as a stern warning to others. Like, if you do this, mm. this these are the consequences of mm. these actions. And when that happens, I'm sorry, we have to let you go. And in fact, you'll be disgraced. Your face will be on national TV. Police, are you hearing? <laughs> <laughs> well, the police does it, uh, you know, but the culprits, the greatest culprits we know about this corruption are the policemen. Uh, on, the, on our roads and yes. everywhere else. Uh, sometimes the police uh, removes these people, but I think they should even do more. 
I don't know how they do it, except somebody complains about it and the person is lucky for that thread to go viral, mm. they don't act on it. Yes. So sometimes, let the PRO or some other people who are uh, high up there go in Mufti and see what their officers do. Exactly. And then when they do that, they can take some actions and name and shame yeah name when the see when others see that you might be dealing with a police officer uh in mufti yeah. because you're doing one or two things they will sit up and mm -hmm. all that but you know Definitely. one day one day as we say it now. <laughs> <laughs> all right um, we'll go on a short break and when we return we'll be looking at what the national dailies are saying this morning in off the press stay with us